Hi everybody, it's me, Miss Maria. I'm here at the Mount Airy branch of Carroll County Public Library, as you can see behind me. And I'd like to welcome you today to Spatial Awareness with Rock, Paper, and Scissors. Well, that's a big title and I'm gonna show you why I called it that. But first of all, Spatial Awareness. Those are two kind of big words. What do you think that means? Hmm, that means where you are in your position or where something else near you is in its position. And here's an example. Today, I am sitting on the floor. So my, my position word was on. I'm on the floor. I can think of a couple other position example words. I have some fun games behind me. Do you see that? This is all behind me. So this is my space and this is their space. Hmm, let me think of one more. I have you and the camera in front of me. Yes, that is your space. Can you wave your arms around your space? And I'm here, you're in front of me. Yay, so welcome. All right, friends. So today we're gonna play some games and read a book and I have two at-home activities to show you that are great practice for spatial awareness. And just a note to my grown-ups, um, spatial awareness is a great skill for little ones to learn for lots of reasons, but my favorite reasons are um, it kind of helps them organize their world. And that's a great skill to have. And then, like I said, it's nice to learn positions, like in front of or behind, on, under. It helps them predict or maybe know where to look for things. Um, and actually, it gives them their own space, which is always nice. All right, friends, so let's get started. So, hmm, right now, I have this box on my lap. It's on my lap. That is its space right now. And I have a couple things in the box. That's another example, in. Let me shake it. Do you think there's anything in there? There really is. I actually have three things and I picked three quiet things. Hmm. Do you have quiet things at your home? Sometimes, do you feel like being quiet? I do. All right, friends, let's reach in and let's see what my first quiet item is. Hmm. You know what that is? Yeah, it's a feather. It's a feather. It's a great color and it feels soft, but if you move it around in something, it's very quiet. Good, I have two more. What's my next? Oh yeah. Something else that's quiet. A pink teddy bear. Yeah. You have teddy bears at home. Are they quiet? Or maybe sometimes they're not. Teddy bear. Good, and I have one more item in the box. Let's see. You might remember what these. this is. A scarf. Do you remember playing with these? Do you have a scarf at home or something like it? You can even pretend with a, a washcloth or a little hand towel, but let me show you. I'm just gonna play very quickly for spatial awareness. I am gonna put the scarf on my teddy bear. On my teddy bear. Hmm, let me try another spatial word. Now where is my scarf? Yes, the scarf is in front of the teddy bear. Good. Hmm, let me try one more. What if we do this? Yes, the scarf is under the teddy bear. The teddy bear is on the scarf. So do you see how that helps our little ones relate to positional words? I love it. All right, friends, thank you for playing along with me. So now we are gonna sing one of my favorite finger plays. So for those, I always say we need our eyes and our ears and our mouths and our hands. And friends, I picked this one because 
For this finger play, we are going to have our hands in front of our body, and sometimes they're going to be behind our body. And that is great spatial awareness. That is a great skill. All right, who remembers two little blackbirds? Do you remember how to get ready for that one? Okay, and it goes, two little blackbirds sitting on a hill. One named Jack and one named Jill. Run away, Jack. Run away, Jill. Come back, Jack. Come back, Jill. So did you see how we had our hands in behind us and in front of us? Let's try that one more time. Ready? Two little blackbirds sitting on a hill. One named Jack and one named Jill. Run away, Jack. Run away, Jill. Come back, Jack. Come back, Jill. Very nice, friends. So while you have your hands in front of you, you can put them together and clap. Excellent. All right. Now, this is one of the reasons why we call this program Spatial Awareness with rock, paper, and scissors. I saw an idea I liked on Pinterest that I'm going to show you in one minute, but I also super duper love this book. This is called The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors, scissors by Drew Daywalt, and it's illustrated by Adam Rex. And Drew Daywalt, you may have heard of him. He is also the author of When the, the Dated Crayons Quit, also one of my favorites. I'm going to read the first few pages of this. The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors. Long ago, in an ancient and distant realm called the Kingdom of Backyard, there lived a warrior named Rock. Rock was the strongest in all the land, but he was sad because no one could give him a worthy challenge. Hmm. Hmm. Rock traveled to the mysterious forest of over by the tire swing, where he met a warrior who hung on a rope holding a giant's underwear. Can you see what he sees? That's a clothesman. Drop that underwear and battle me, you ridiculous wooden clip man. I will pinch you and make you cry, rock warrior. Rock versus clothespin. Rock is victorious. Hmm, wow, did you see that coming? Even though he had won, Rock was still unsatisfied. So he journeyed on to the mystical tower of Grandma's favorite ap apricot tree. There he was met by an odd and delicious fruit. You, sir, look like a fuzzy little butt. What? I challenge you to a duel. Then let us battle. Oh, if it's rock versus apricot, who do you think is going to win? I don't know. To find out, you need to read the book. And then you will also see how rock eventually meets paper and scissors and what happens at the very end. It is a super fun book. All right, friends, thank you for reading with me. I have one more fun game before I show you my rock, paper, scissors game you can do at home and why I have my animal friends behind me. So, before we do those, what do I have way behind me? Back here. Can you see that? I have one elephant in a bathtub. Do you think an elephant would fit in your bathtub? An elephant would not fit in mine. But let's play the game. It goes like this. One elephant in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash. Come on in. Can you play along? Next we have, oh no, two elephants in the bathtub going for a swim. Ready? Knock, knock, splash, splash. Come on in. What number is next? You said three. You're right. Oh my goodness. Three elephants in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash. Come on in. What's next? Four, four elephants in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash. Come on in. And what's our last number? 
five. Good. Five elephants in the bathtub, and they all fell in. Oh, friends, that is crazy. Maybe tonight you could play a game in your bathtub. That's a fun place to play. All right, friends. So now, very quickly, I would like to show you two at-home ideas that I found on Pinterest. And the first one, and like I said, this is why I put the program together, because I saw this and I thought this was really cool. So grown-ups, if you go online and just um, do a search for spatial awareness activities, this pops up very often. This is from Little Pine Learners. But this is just a piece of paper with a heart drawn on it, and someone went and got a lot of different size rocks and pebbles. And then um, little kiddos, with their, they can practice filling in um, inside the heart. And that is a great spatial awareness practice. And it's fun, and you can do it over and over again. Um, I did the same thing, but I used buttons. So if you can see behind me, I did my own version of a heart, and I just put mine together with buttons. So you could really do this with any shape. You could make it seasonal. Um, I know Easter will be coming in a couple months. You could maybe make an Easter egg shape. You could use any household item. All you need is the outline of a shape and something that you have many of that are different shapes and sizes that your little one can practice um, filling in um, that, that shape and learning some spatial awareness. All right, the last game I wanna show you that you can also make at home is called Animal Lineup or Animal Parade. And I got this idea online too, and really all you need, friends, are some animal toys, or really you could do this with little green soldiers, you could do this with any toy you have at home, and some fun tape. And I just made one long straight line, and then in the back I made a zigzag line. And you can start off with them plain, and then um, you and your kiddos can line them up and just practice good spatial awareness. This is great. This shows where um, each appropriate space is. And this is eventually a preschool skill for learning how to get up and go stand in line. So, all right, friends, I have really enjoyed spending this time with you. I hope you have enjoyed learning about spatial awareness with rock, with rock paper, and scissors. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.